Yo, what is up, AD team? Austin Dunham back again with another video. I am joined with a special guest, Janelle. Go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Who are you, what you do, and why are we gonna be talking about the things we're gonna talk about today? All right, thanks so much for having me, Austin. Um, my name is Janelle Gordon. I'm an intimacy tantric sexpert, and I'm sure you're like, what does sexpert mean? Basically, a sexpert is someone who helps uh, men and women entrepreneurs, probably like yourself, that are maybe struggling with issues around shame uh, in regards to sexuality or you're having sexual challenges or you're having intimacy challenges, meaning you want to feel closer in the relationship you're in, you feel disconnected from your partner. Um, so any, any and all of those issues, I help you solve. Nice, so, nice, nice. Super so, stoked to be here. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I've seen a, a bit of your content regarding that stuff. Yeah. But I've also seen more of your content regarding like talking about relationships, relationship dynamics, so a little bit of red pill talk in there too. Yes. And um, in this video, which I like to call like the RP talks, where I discuss sort of relationship dynamics and, and different stuff regarding that. Um, usually with men, you're actually the first woman I've ever had <laughs> doing this sort of talk with. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm sure excited. you guys are excited too. Go ahead and subscribe, like the video because we're about to get into it. Let's go. The first question I have, and this is more gearing towards the red pill side of things. Do you understand what the red pill is? And like, if you do, what, what is your take on it? Yeah. I mean, I got, that's a great question. I got thrown into the red pill world uh, unbeknownst to me. I had hopped on the fresh and fit through a mutual friend of ours, um, Chad, mm -hmm. who said, you got to get on this. You got to get on this you know, platform. This will be good for your, what your, your brand and getting yourself out there. And I started getting inundated with red pill stuff, which I had mm -hmm. never really formally heard of before, you know? Okay. So for me, this was my first introduction, but what I found to be quite interesting was that what I teach is this from a metaphysic, metaphysical principles, a spiritual, personal development path, if you will. It was very much so mirroring the red pill community, very close. Mm -hmm. There was a few things that were, that were not the same, but a lot of similarities. And I thought, wow, this is interesting. And so I sort of became <laughs> red pill without even knowing it. Um, mm -hmm. Now, when you said the question like, what does that mean? Is it, was what, that what, like, is, what does red pill mean to you? To you like yeah. based on what your understanding of it, do you have like a personal definition or? Um, that... The red pill definition to me is like thinking outside of like the matrix. If, if you all remember that movie that dates me a little bit, mm -hmm. Keanu Reeves where he took that pill, you know, and yeah. sort of opened his eyes to what was really going on. And for me, that's how I see that community. It's like, if you do what everyone else does, what kind of results do you get? you get results like everyone else does. But if you want different results in your body, right? In your relationships and your sex life, you sort of have to do what other people aren't willing to do. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's what the red pill is. It's a path of doing what is not considered normalcy um, or normalcy rather, uh, and to get these better results in relationships. And so the red pill is about like sort of switching the dynamics of masculine and feminine polarity and energy as we know it today. Gotcha. Okay. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was an bit. interesting um, definition. I asked because everybody has their own interpretation of it. Yeah, yeah. So I want to hear yours coming from a woman lens, yeah. a female lens, right? Mm -hmm. um, usually the standard definition of red pill is like just understanding actually female nature from a biological perspective. Yeah. And that could play into relationship dynamics, you mm -hmm. know, the po polarity the between masculine and feminine. Correct and all that stuff and it can get really deep but that's pretty much the baseline mm -hmm. level of it when it comes to understanding of it yes and that makes i mean it makes perfect sense to me because if you're talking about like understanding women then with you have a deep understanding of women so on that everything in the universe is polarity you can't mm -hmm. know one without the other yeah so if you have this deep understanding of women then ultimately you're going to have a deep understanding of men it's, it's going to mm -hmm. be both and so i think that with red pill and what I teach, it's like always about finding that balance. How do I, how do we find this balance of masculine and feminine polarity where it's charged, where you still have really extreme desire, you wanna f your partner, mm -hmm. um, but you still can, you know, exist, coexist together and work in a relationship dynamic that benefits. It's mutually beneficial. We're not talking like sugar daddy here. We're talking about yeah. like just for both parties. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Now you being in your industry of the sex bird and like optimizing sexual performance and all that stuff, are you aware that actually most men, I think that the, the stats like one in three men are virgins and or sexless. And um, yes. so 
from from your take of working with men i already know why for the most part why do you think that is the reason why that's happened today is i believe is is modern feminism mm -hmm. it's um this new wave of women don't need men women would rather have a fat bank account a fat cat and a fat dildo than coexist with a man yeah then submit to man i've had women on my comments that have literally said they would delete themselves they would rather self-delete themselves than surrender submit to a man that's insane like on TikTok. yeah on these platforms the ones i was showing you mm -hmm. to me that is like insane so why these men are sexless i believe one is because you know women have castrated men they have decided to become the men themselves mm -hmm. and, and media and everyone has has helped them do this let's not just blame the women right yeah this has been a um indoctrinization like if you went to church yeah you got this me yeah. too i was mm -hmm. a pastor's daughter missionary's daughter so i was indoctrinated i believed what they want me to believe and that's what's happened um, with the gender and the polarity dynamics of masculine and feminine, they've taken all the women, turned them into men. And now what happens again by law of nature, mm -hmm. if, if women are now men, what happens to men? Men become women. So men are sexist today because they become women. Um, they've never really been, I think for a lot of men, they fear actually, I talk a lot about this. They fear actually stepping into that what I call like that Shiva hood, that presence of being a man. Like they're afraid to do it almost because like, if I really like own who I am as a man and I like assert my dominance, my masculine dominance, I could A, get a Me Too movement slapped on me, mm -hmm. B, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push this woman away and I really like her and, and I don't wanna lose her and when will I get another woman? Like there's like a scarcity mindset, scarcity mindset right? Yeah, yeah. And, and like, I can't do this, so I need to like just show this woman that I am good enough to get her. Mm -hmm. and it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah. why are you showing women anything? And I think that throws off the dynamic from the start. It does. With guys operating from that frame of mind. Um, and then uh, moving alongside with that, yeah. I agree with that point. But um, have you heard of the 80 20 rule? Basically, yes. how like <clears throat> the most attractive men in all the realms of looks, money, status, which also is something that the Red Pill teaches to improve. That's right. Are getting the majority of the women, whereas the guys who aren't really reaching to that maximum threshold are kind of in invisible. Um, have you noticed that at all in, in your lifetime of experience? <laughs> I've noticed that, like, I've experienced it. Like, I, it's, it's crazy because I was telling you, we were talking off camera, like, women get so mad at me. I have a post right now that's, they're furious and saying that I'm, have self-esteem issues because I said this this thing. I said, if a high value man cheats on you, you should stay with him. As long as there's some level of like, there's, I mean, if he's high value, he's providing value. So whether it's in the form of resources, stability, uh, uh, sex, you know, whatever the case may Something, be, yeah. fatherhood, whatever, depending on if you're married or whatever, like you should stay with him. Because mm -hmm. if you leave, you, are probably just going to attract someone else who's going to do the same thing. Exactly. And these yeah. women are so mad at me. They say, well, for you to think that way, you don't have self-esteem because why would you stay with a man that cheats? And I'm saying, well, why do you stay with a man that cheats? You don't even know it, but you're probably being cheated on. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's the reality. I'm just the person that says, I know it's happening. Mm -hmm. And if it's worth it to me, like if he's adding value to my life or he's adding value to my sons or we're doing business or whatever together, mm -hmm. then yeah, of course I would stay with him and have, yeah. you know, I, I think that, um, what's the original question you were saying? Like what? Uh, the 80, 20 rule. The 80, 20, yeah. The 80, 20 rule, it does, it exists. And the reason why women have a hard time swallowing this is because they're delusional. Like, yes, I said that women are delusional. They think that they're, when we say Sanskrit, the Sanskrit word for vagina is yoni. They think that their yoni is so magical that a guy is going to only stay with them for life. It's only yeah. going to choose to stay in that one little triangle forever. And it's like, that is just, it doesn't make sense because the higher the value, the more options he has, the more he's probably going to exercise them unless there's some kind of strong religious backing behind, backing that, behind yeah, him. I and agree. then even then <laughs> it's even more tumultuous, I think, because there's an inner conflict where he wants to do it, but he's like, I can't I because can't, I'm going to go yeah. to hell or mm -hmm. worse, you know, all these things. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, I just believe that it is happening and women just don't want to admit it because they want to think that they're so good that they're providing all the value as far as a woman 
that a man's gonna stay with them, but it's just not the case. Gotcha. It's not the case. You know what I've realized is that women who have these really strict rules, like, oh, I, I wouldn't leave a guy, a high value guy if he's cheated, so on and so forth, are the same women who's actually never been in that situation never, to even deal with that. They've never dealt with a high value man. Because exactly. if they would, you don't leave them and you yeah. do everything to make sure that it's going to work or you can mm -hmm. get back with them. I've seen time and time again, even in my own life, of me at my age range being in the top 10%, top 5%, mm -hmm. that um, a How lot of How old are you? Are you 26? 26. Yeah, you're same, same age as all the guys that I date. So <laughs> pretty much so now. <laughs> yeah, so a, a lot of women I've realized um, changed their rules for me. Whereas Mm -hmm. The last guy they're with, they would never. They would not never. consider marriage or uh, allow me to exercise options. Correct, because you know. they know you're high value. Like my, to me, women think I'm crazy. Yeah. To think that way. I mean, most women operate in their feelings and, and yeah. that rational logic. You know, so saying that when they've been programmed their whole life to like have monogamous commitment, guys don't cheat, whatever the case may be. They're loyal and, to you. They're a good man. Exactly. <laughs> right. And mm -hmm. to be told otherwise is like kind of almost like being having red pill rage from a guy's perspective. When guys discover the red pill, they get like super like riled up about it, rage and don't want to accept it. And I feel like that can be the same as I think with women in regards to the whole monogamy, guys want to exercise options sort of thing. Now, um, I know the answer to this, but I want to hear yeah. your take on it too. Do you think guys are like naturally just monogamous or do you think monog mon monogamy in itself is more of a society created thing? Ren monogamy in itself, just like everything else that's here to control us is it's a form of control it's a form just like religion religion is a form of control to control the masses why when you have people like me who do my work where i teach people to harness the power of their sexual energy and use it to to take energy and turn it into matter meaning hundred dollar bills if they want mm -hmm. that is something you don't want the masses learning mm -hmm. why because then nobody works for anyone anymore right mm -hmm. like we can't have you know, class systems and this huge, this tiny little 1%, you mm -hmm. know, and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, so all of these, these concepts are created to control the sheep. I like to call them the sheep. Sheep, yeah. The sheep, bah, eat whatever they tell me to eat, watch whatever they tell me, spend my money That's here. That's in the matrix, right? Exactly. Yeah. And whatever your convictions are, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just saying like, you have to think, are you doing what everyone else is doing? That's probably, maybe not the best option, right? Because mm. who is this like elite people that are running everything? So you're saying monogamy is meant to control society? Yeah, I think monogamy was a way to control society because if not, then you have people out just everyone, right? Mm -hmm. There's no like ramifications. There's no like, you know, like there's no family unit. And obviously we want the family unit. That's how we're creating you know, uh, families and generation, generational wealth and all this sort of thing. But when you have people, men who aren't monogamous by nature, right? They're, look at even in the Bible, if you wanna go back to the Bible, how many wives were, were people having? Multiple mm -hmm. wives and they're also having concubines. Yeah. Like basically side pieces back then in the yeah. Bible, you know, the side chicks. So I think monogamy is a concept that was created to try to control um, the sheep. Right? We can't have people just out sleeping with one another. That's, you know, that is not going to benefit us. Mm -hmm. We need to have control. We need to have religion. It tells you what you can and cannot do. When yeah. you think about religion, it's a set of rules, right? Basically, yeah. Basically a set of rules. People have all these rules about religion and then they'll adhere to one and then they'll look at you and say, you're not following the others. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you? Do you have any tattoos? Did you sleep with someone before you're married? All those are sins, right? Yeah. So monogamy, men are inherently wired to spread their seed all over. Exactly. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. Like it's a confetti party of semen. Like that's how men are really. <laughs> 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 like that's how they're wired to like, it's just, it's naturally. Now, can we have some control over that? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like a level of self mastery. You've done it with your body. You've done it with your business. It's like this, a man should want to have some self mastery. You yeah. know, you don't certainly want to stick your eggplant in everything. You really yeah. don't. There's some ramifications that can come exactly. from that, right? Yeah. But so yeah, I believe it's 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 um, it was a constructed concept for control. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I feel like men can get to a point of wanting monogamy, and there's certainly men who actually do want that. Yeah. Um, but I believe if men were given the option 
to have the abundance of women on the side, they would also choose that Absolutely. too. Absolutely. However, it's just the case going back to the 80-20 rule, most men actually don't have those options, so they're not able to exercise them in the first place. Yeah, they're not. They're 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 sending their disguise. <laughs> he sends like these paragraphs on every single one of my posts. Mm -hmm. On both pages. And people are like, a lot of guys are like, bro, are you okay, man? <laughs> Yeah. Like it's like the ultimate level of something. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. And that's what most men don't take it that extreme, but most men have that on some level where they're they're like it's a pipe dream to to talk to a girl like at all, yeah. at all you know. Mm -hmm. And so and women like we we don't realize like I always say I've said this before on Fresh and Fit like I like men. You know why I I love working with men over women any day because men are face value. Mm -hmm. They're just gonna say hey here's the money. See you on this date. Here's what I want to accomplish. There's single point of focus. Here's what I want to accomplish. Here's where I am now. Can you get me there? Absolutely. And they'll tell you, hey, I'm not going to be faithful with you, or I don't want a relationship right now. They like men will tell you what they want. Mm -hmm. Women, we're over here. We're like, oh, we like hear something else. Yeah. And we like hear and believe something else, and then we are not honest with you. How so? Like, I mean, I said this on the Fresh and Fit, like most women are sleeping with a few few different men. I've noticed that, especially in the talking stages, I, I've caught multiple women telling me they're only talking to me, but like behind the scenes, they're, they're doing their thing. Most women are, yeah. and I talked about this, there's a way they do it. They're sleeping with other men, and then they're not sleeping with the guy they really like because they want to appear like they're the good girl. Like, I don't give it up. I'm not out in the streets. I'm not backing it up. Mm -hmm. I'm this good, like, I'm put on my Martha Stewart, you know, dress. Yeah. Like, here's some muffins. Like, they're very portraying this. Yeah. I'm the good girl, so you'll girlfriend wife and them wife up. them up. But they're getting it from other guys. Somewhere else, somebody. Until like, that day comes, you know, when you maybe try to steal the deal and then they'll probably hopefully drop the other guys yeah. but still sometimes I feel like those guys are still around circling you know what I, I tell guys is if a woman holds out on you she either likes you too much or doesn't like you at all isn't True. that funny she okay let me think so she either likes you too much meaning oh yeah she wants the marriage the she, whole thing the yeah whole. or she's positioning you like in this boyfriend box yes I'm gonna present myself as the good the girl, girl so girl. that Correct. I get commitment or she doesn't simply That's doesn't like you she at doesn't all. like you at all because yeah. if a woman likes you she'll no. Period. Like she's not gonna friend zone you at all. Mm -hmm. it, it, like women just don't do that. If they, like you said, it's one of two things. They're either a trying to be the good Christian girl, the church girl, and say like, because I want this guy as a boyfriend because they see your value, mm -hmm. or b they're not interested in you at all and they're just trying to use you for dinners and whatever else they can get from you. Exactly. It's the dual mated strategy, which is also um, popular in the red pill space. Beta bugs, alpha fucks. Have you heard that? No, I see. I don't know a lot of the terminologies. Uh -uh. Gotcha. So the dual mated strategy represents re represents that women want two things: a, a guy for like provisioning the beta bugs, um, resources, mm -hmm. care, stuff like that, and a thug to f them. Basically, like the yeah. good jeans guy, the guy who's handsome, tall, whatever the case may be, affluent to some degree. She's fucking that dude, right? But the other guy she wants um, security for, uh, idealistically, they want a guy for both. But that's so that's rare. rare. That's it's a high value man. So rare, because even like my ex, he's like, he's got the looks, you know, six mm -hmm. eight, eight pack, dimples. He's every, he's a, one of my friends says, you know, he's everyone's type. I'm like, I know, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have money yet. Moving towards like the, the sex talk and all that stuff with your sex expertise. So like, I love that, sex expertise. Sex expertise. Hashtag that, that's a good one. <laughs> um, in a long-term relationship and or marriage, do you believe that the the man or the woman loses interest in sex first? Great question. I love this. This is one of the best questions I've been asked. And no one's ever asked me this one before. I think that the woman loses first if they've had kids. Okay, well, what's that? Because your hormones change when you after you have children. This is all contingent upon most women. And I have to always take myself out because I'm not most women, so I have yeah. to think I'm, I am the rule, or yeah. the, the exception rather. So generalize, most women, they get it right, they score. They get the ring, they get the marriage, they're like, no more OnlyFans, I can, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm like taken care of now. <laughs> and then they, they want to get pregnant right away. Why? It's ensuring security. financial security, yeah. right? So what happens? They may, maybe were, maybe you probably didn't wife a 10, but maybe like a six with hair and makeup a seven. That's mm -hmm. I think is a safe place. If you want a woman that's gonna probably maintain and be more loyal, that's yeah. a good number. What do you think on that? I'm so curious. Um, 
I, I noticed in my experience, like the dimes, the IG batteries, the Instagram models, they tend to not showcase wifey traits in the first correct. place. I noticed more towards, in my life, the sevens and, and eights are mostly yeah. showcase like those wifey characteristics. Correct. Yeah. yeah. The baddies are just, they're good for one thing to mm -hmm. look at and to hit it from the back, yeah. probably for the most part, unless you're, that's what you want, just like a body mm -hmm. but most men ultimately that's not what they want they they want to be nurtured they want to be you know loved and cared for and their family to be cared for mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter how hot you are if you can't take care of a baby you can't yeah. take care of a man you know so what i think happens is she gets the ticket she gets the ring she can relax a little she has her baby and she starts letting herself go now maybe if it's not with baby number one certainly two and by third she's gone but what i feel what happens is a lot of times the women will divert all that energy she was giving you towards the baby mm -hmm. and then there's like a and not sexual but there's like a love affair with the baby and so then it's like i don't want to blow you i'm gonna take care of the baby yeah and that's okay for a certain amount of time after you've just given birth right but what happens is that doesn't really ever stop Mm -hmm. You know, it never gets better, never goes yeah. back. You're like, when is, when are we getting back to like, she, she's, she's not like how she was, you know, before the baby, before the or baby. even at the start of the relationship. The, correct. Yeah, it changes. And it changes. And now she moves into the more, the mother role. Like, okay, I'm the mother. And then what happens, I think, is the guy starts to be like, I don't really want to fuck that. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's my, that's like my child's mom. She doesn't look the same. She sort of let herself go. And they just, it's just that polarity starts to weaken. Mm -hmm. So that would be my answer. If there's not kids involved, um, I actually still almost always think it's the women who lose interest first. I think because men are more prone to have sex than women. Even though women do have a, a like a sexual drive, a high one too, but not mm -hmm. as high as men. Men have yeah. testosterone. Yeah, true. It's just higher for men. But yeah. that's, that's my thoughts. What are yours? Um, that's a tough one. I've never really thought about it. Uh, it depends on who gets comfortable first. Because yeah. in relationships, I agree. After a baby, like I've seen women get comfortable, lose themselves physically. Mm -hmm. But also, like men do the same thing. From from what I've seen, mm. generally, if a guy gets a lot of men get comfortable in relationships over a long period of time, they lose their attractiveness, they lose their drive, they lose their ambition, which in turn might make their woman or wife less attracted to them, which will cause issues in itself. Yeah, of course. So. This is where the whole communication thing, I think is important on both parties. But if both parties can stay up to par, like physically, mentally, and communicate, like, and be proactive regarding that situation, I do think it can be pro-lasted. You know, eventually, I think maybe the guy would get tired of um, just having sex with the same person over a long period of time. That's right. For That's the other right. reasons we talked about before. Yeah, for variety, and just for the, the same thing as they're wired for variety, and to just to... Mm -hmm. Confetti. It, exactly. <laughs> That's going to be the new word. Um, but yeah, it, it really depends. But based on general aspects of things, I think I agree with you too in regards to like the woman could lose this overall interest based on what I've seen and heard. And women do cheat. They just te tend to cheat, excuse me, more emotionally. Women mm -hmm. cheat emotionally. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes it will lead to sexual behavior, but typically it's emotional fuckery first yeah to me i think that's worse and most guys don't it's what do you worse. what do you think no it's a, a really? woman cheating versus a man cheating. you're like one of, no 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 like okay so for instance i am like this is actually a true story um i like have a crazy sexual connection with my ex right but on the other hand like when we broke up i had a connection with someone else but i you haven't had anything sexual mm -hmm. not even making out nothing the worst mm. was like the peck on the lips like mm -hmm. on a cheers that was it but an emotional connection emotional and spiritual gotcha okay we have the same energy practice whatever yeah yab yumming that sort of thing mm -hmm. which so if that were to happen if you were married and your wife had that kind of connection like i had to you what's worse if she did that or she just fucked some guy I know, I, neither are ideal. Neither honestly. are ideal, but I think I, I will be more worse that the dude actually fucked her, to be honest. Exactly. Yeah. See, because men, because men don't think emotionally. They mm -hmm. don't think intimacy. Like men think sexually, and it's like, oh, another guy, that's mine. Like this is mine. This guys are programmed this way, right? Exactly. But I, I also realized that like there has to be some sort of emotional ties drawn in the, to the fact that she submitted herself to him through cheating. Through but you I, mean I through really, sexual or through, through through sexual connection? Like she, that means she she liked him to some degree. 
And that's so emotional the, to me Correct. Too. But that's why I say most women don't, I believe they don't go through all the way with the sexual. It's more an emotional. Yeah. The like calling, texting, and he's there, there for the M. And, and they, they call have, that entertaining. Like, yeah. Entertaining. yeah. Whatever. <laughs> my ex always say, says, a shoulder to cry is a dick to ride on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. It's so true though. But to me, for, for me as a woman, and I tell like every every partner that I've had that I've had like a serious relationship with, I'm like, listen, if we are in a committed monogamous relationship and we've gone through like, you know, whatever, we've been together a year or more, we've had this, we're, you know, talking about marriage, we're like serious, right? Mm -hmm. And you go and you just fuck a hoe. I'm like, I'll get over it. Like, yeah, I'm emotional too. I know I look together like now, but yeah. I still cried my eyes out. I still was like, what's wrong with me? I did that whole yeah. stuff too. But logically, I understand it's just sex, right? Yeah. But I told him like, hey, if you go and like have an emotional connection with another woman, like you guys are like playlists together and writing, you know, little sexy text and like, you know, talking about trips or taking like that kind of, but even if you didn't That'd fuck her, worse for you. Worse. Yeah. I would be like leaving you, taking the kids, calling yeah. my divorce lawyer. You know, like mm -hmm. that to me is worse because sex is just sex. It's just, it's physical. Porn stars do it. People, most of the time people are fucking, they're not even there anyway. Trust me. Mm -hmm. They're ment mentally somewhere else. Women are or doing the laundry. They're thinking about someone else. Statistics have shown that most of the time that most people are thinking about when they're having sex, they're thinking about their ex actually when they're wow. having sex with you. And the number is pretty high. It's not, yeah. it's not crazy high, but I'll try to get those in the notes. But yeah, so they're not there anyway. So mm -hmm. sex is sex, but the emotional connection, that's one that you feel it. Cause as women, we want to feel like we can provide that level of like emotional intimacy for a man. Exactly. Yeah. And like you guys want to feel like you can provide financially and sexually. Mm -hmm. You don't want her to get, you know that from anyone else obviously yeah. right so so would you agree that you've already stated that if a high value man cheats that you would stay yeah um of course. what if i got two questions what if it was that average man no well i first of all i wouldn't date an average man yeah i'm not average. but but would you <laughs> let's say an average woman watching her average guy okay cheated and she found out would you suggest her to also stay or is that okay. like a move on sentence? all right all right great question i i, I like this if you ask good questions yeah. all right so average woman well i think that there has to be you have to know your outcome i'm really a big proponent of this always know your outcome in anything what's your outcome in staying or leaving in, in staying are you hoping to you know him to be faithful again are you hoping to you know, have kids, do you have kids? All these things would be huge questions I would ask. Mm -hmm. um, and if your outcome in leaving is that you're gonna find a better person. Grass is greener, sort of Grass deal. is greener. Yeah. You know, so know your outcome. But what I would say is one, if you think that grass is greener, you're dating an average man, no offense. There's nothing wrong with being average. In fact, it's probably a lot easier <laughs> than not being average, is you're probably gonna attract another average man. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the grass isn't necessarily always greener for average men the cheating there's there's an underlying issue mm -hmm. it's not about just variety it's something an emotional need of his a need of his wasn't being met rather gotcha. and you can fix that um i think that so many women think oh i'm just gonna leave and i'm gonna find it's better mm -hmm. you know over there <laughs> over there and it probably isn't and it probably isn't whether you're average high value whatever because the bottom line is that cheating, you know, first of all, we just have marriage, but so it's a coin toss basically if your marriage is going to last anyways. Yeah. So you have to know that going into it. And then you add in all the stuff we have to do with social media and how it's so easy to meet people. It's so easy to cheat today. Very you don't social have media, dating apps, etc. everything. Even if you're average, I'm sure there's like average people in like Ohio that are like, you know, able to cheat and pretty easily at work yeah at work That's whatever one. Yeah. yeah like you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. it's i think that women have to stop thinking that i'm going to get better and and also like i'm going to find someone who's going to come in on his white horse and provide for me and be loyal to me and make love to me and you know kiss me like in the notebook and, you know like all these things that we've seen on these movies that it's it's fiction. It's a no. movie. It's entertainment. Do you think from your own personal life, not asking like what you think yeah. about the general public, but have you yourself been able to sexually satisfy one man over a long period of time? 
Let's see, my longest relationship has been, it's been a couple years, so I'd say that, that the answer is really no, you know? It's like, I'm not like, I don't have like a golden yoni. Like I definitely have, you know, know what to do to take care of it. And I teach women how to do this, how to have like 11 forms of orgasm, all this sorts of stuff, but training your yoni. But I always say like, it's not bad. You could have the best yoni. You can, it could be the wet, wet, the tightest guys. Like you guys have a great sex life and he's still gonna cheat if he has the options and it's there. Mm -hmm. so, like these hoes that were inboxing me, I was just laughing. I was like, what? really like i was like with them like it was just like mind-blowing to me yeah. but it's not about that for men a lot of times i think women just can't logically understand why that's the case why would something because oftentimes guys are cheating with maybe not even as high value of women or as hot women, as, yeah. as hot sometimes mm -hmm. it could be hotter like in my case all the women were younger but mm -hmm. i mean i'm 40 and he was 25 at the time 26 so they're obviously probably gonna yeah. be younger but it's sometimes not even that. It's just like, it's just like, I always say it's like an itch that needs scratch. It's not like, well, why is that scratchy? It's just like, oh, it's just itch yeah. it. I'm scratching it, it's done, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think this is the thing that I don't think we're ever gonna get, it's ever gonna be solved. Women are always gonna feel like men should be loyal to them if they are showing up as a high value woman and providing for them and caring for them and cooking for them and fucking them and all the things that women should be doing, which we know most women aren't doing those things. Mm -hmm. But if a woman comes like that, then a man should stay loyal to her. Gotcha. And that's a, that's a great concept, but I just don't believe it happens. Yeah. And most of the women that I'm on pants with say, oh, there's high value men out there that do it. I'm like, I'm sure there are, but that's the exception, not the rule. I yeah. firmly believe that. As, as a guy, and given my experience of obviously being friends with lots of dudes over the course of years and seeing my friends and relationships, etc., I kid you not, I don't know one person that has not cheated. Literally, I don't, literally not one person. Is this religious? Are these religious people too? Um, people that are- Yeah, Fraser right. I don't know one person who hasn't not cheated. Has not, not cheated, but yeah. and that's what I'm saying. Are these people that grew up in the faith or- or like have religious um, backgrounds? Some of them, I don't have any extreme like religious. Like extreme religious, but yeah, just people but went but to like, church. They have faith, they go to church, might pray, whatever, but they still, like if a baddie slides in their DMs, it's happening. They're gonna hit things. Exactly. Yeah, and and as long as their girlfriend doesn't find out, they do it and then And most of the time, the girlfriends don't find out. Never, no. no. In my case, I just happen to be very public and so <laughs> people saw me on TikTok and saw pictures of us yeah. together, so they're like, oh! It was a little messy, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what happens when you're in the. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, my last question about cheating on the subject yeah. while we're on it. Um, it's my second question. Do you believe that the re the relationship is actually over if the woman cheats and the guy finds out? I think for an alpha man, yes. Yeah. I think for <clears throat> beta men, they will stay. Yeah, I've seen many cases of my friends staying and the girls cheating on them and they still stay and they're loyal. And, and they're and it's loyal and then it ends up because no that respect. because they, they become the men. Yeah. L literally. It's like a mm -hmm. transgender operation happening right there. <laughs> you're yeah. now a man, you're the woman. Mm -hmm. There's just no respect and men need a few things in life. Not a lot. They definitely need freedom. Um, they need respect, loyalty, um, and they need sex. It's pretty much so those. Yeah. The order differs for each guy but um but so for women they don't like need sex like men do mm -hmm. they need intimacy they need presence they need love they need security yeah. you know they need to be seen mm -hmm. I, that's separate from validation i know the red pill disagrees with me on that a little bit these are different values mm -hmm. that drive men and women gotcha. and so if a woman cheats that destroys that trust that respect and that that loyalty that men need from women yeah and so it's like after that it's like like what <laughs> i i don't think they can come back from that and mm -hmm. i don't i don't believe that alpha men stay around for that i i think i think women should understand it and learn by now that if men have the option to do so, especially if you're with a celebrity, a rapper, an athlete of some sort they're gonna and, get a thousand times more dms yeah <laughs> or access Mm -hmm. And they're probably going to initiate on that access um, unless they get to a point where it's like morally deficient the, the or correct. whatever, they feel bad. The risk isn't worth the reward exactly. because it's a financial thing. Like they're like, or their kids are like, damn, I don't want to lose my kids for this piece. It's exactly. nice, but is it like, what do they call it? Post, post not clarity or whatever. Or like, mm -hmm. mm, was it really worth it? I've learned this is 
might be controversial, but yeah. a, a way to combat that feeling of like urging to cheat. Let's say you're with a significant other and you have the urge to cheat or you maybe have access to do so. Um, once you have actually have done it, whatever, a way to like combat that is to simply just fap it out. Because mm. after, after you do it, it's almost like you come to the same conclusion as if you were with that woman. It's like the same post coming not clarity. That you feel like, oh shoot, like exactly. yeah, but this instead, is really worth it. Exactly, but instead you you release that urge with yourself. Yeah, versus go versus just, using like just another woman temporarily. Correct, and then you don't know what happens from that scenario. Whether it's like somehow the, the girl finds out, and then becomes this thing, and mm -hmm. then it unravels, and then where there's one hoe, there's many. I learned that too. Yeah, I think it's just one. It's never just one. There's yeah. like always an army of them. That's true. <laughs> it's like they just keep coming. <laughs> Now, now moving off from the cheating stuff, that was definitely insight. <laughs> that was oh, that was intense, but it's all good. Um, I did this is one of my last topics I want to discuss okay. is um, marriage. So you yourself, have you you ever been married? I've been close. I've been engaged a couple times, but never married all the way. Gotcha. Are you gonna talk about prenups? I'm not gonna talk about prenups, but marriage in itself. Do yeah. you feel like with this modern day economy, the statistics and what you see in the married couples, the lack of sex, the losing themselves, etc. Do you think marriage is worth it for men in the long run? Like, is it a good investment for men to actually get married? It's probably a terrible investment. Let's just be honest, because yeah. it depends on what state you're in. You know, Texas, it's like common law marriage. You live with someone for more than a few years. You, you're, they're entitled to half and shit. It's like, mm -hmm. it's crazy in some of these states, you know? But even, and then you have to put the kids, you have to put that into the equation. Like a lot of these states are pro the women. There's some of them that are pro men, but mm -hmm. that's few. So they're gonna give the kids to the to the mom unless she's some crack whore or something, which yeah. hopefully you didn't, you know, yeah. choose that. Sure. And, you know, so they're getting the kids. You're paying alimony. You're paying child support. Um, in the end, it, marriage is a terrible investment for men. If you want mm -hmm. me to be honest, do I think that men should still try it? Yeah, I mean, you're here in this life once. What do you really want to die alone with a bunch of money? Mm -hmm. a bunch of baddies and maybe some men do but ultimately men want to procreate they want to have a family they want to have kids right but but the, the argument to that is that a they can marriage do that without marriage is not needed True. To live that lifestyle, i know? mean listen i advocate for committed long-term hopefully somewhat eventually monogamous relationships like in the future we get this you know a little calm down a little more so that so that these kids have a good dynamic of Family masculine dynamic. and feminine yeah. energy that they've seen two loving partners together growing up and that they're like wow i had a great mom and dad maybe they weren't married or maybe they weren't together or what maybe it was two moms i really don't care but like mm -hmm. that they saw love that was given and they saw respect and they saw a system of polarity meaning one leaner one follower yeah. like i think those things are important can those happen outside of a marriage absolutely i think the marriage is what again we've been indoctrinated to believe mm. is necessary and i don't like would i be okay if i didn't get married mm. yeah but you have like a long-term loving relationship long-term loving relationship yeah. where yeah we're committed to this per person we have shared interests or shared values some level of emotional connection mm -hmm. obviously for me number one is sexual has to be there because mm -hmm. if you don't have sexual chemistry polarity don't kid yourself you have a roommate yeah. Because sex is the only thing that differentiates it's your relationships plus, plus from any yeah. other relationship on the planet. Your mom, your aunt, your coworker. Mm -hmm. So if you're not fucking, you're you're you got a roommate. Yep. That's so true. just remember that. True. You gotta change that dynamic if you're not. <laughs> Absolutely. Now I feel like we can definitely keep talking, but yeah, I'm gonna sure. end it here. Guys, if you want more, we're gonna do a special on my Patreon talking about how to give women better and more orgasms from her perspective of being a sex expert once again. Um, and also, where can they find you, Janelle? Um, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is Janelle Gordon, and definitely subscribe. I go live and do a lot of do a lot of cool sex stuff on there. And then um, theofactors.com. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you for joining me today. Y'all subscribe, like the video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.